Hello, welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we are in sunny Pakenham, where all the best podcasts are made. We're in a backyard full of family. We've got music playing in the background. It probably means we have got some sort of copyright strikes to, uh, possibly. to do, possibly. Oh, the I voice, won't tell anyone if you don't. The voice on the other end of the line, you know, we get some big names on this podcast. We had Steel Saunders and... Tracy Gardner and faces that he's looking at me going, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> uh, but it's the first time we've had uh, some, somewhat a professional, showbiz professional in here. He, he's been in movies, he's been on TV, but he's really just my cousin Angus. Yeah. Hey, cousin Angus McLaren, how's it going, buddy? Good cousin Josh, how are you, my man? <laughs> Good, mate. Just a bit of background, like you became famous when I was overseas, so I never really got uh, caught up in the Angus mania. So yeah. just went, oh, Angus is on telly, I'm like, oh. Came back and that was that. And that was that. It was probably a good thing you missed it. I think it's uh, it's it's been a wild ride. But uh, it's you, you, there's look there's no there's no big head here. This is just this is just sitting in the backyard chatting Star Wars. That's chatting right. Shop. That's right. And we only see each other very sporadically. It is actually two days before Christmas. It is. It is actually to put a pin in it. Uh, the last episode that we had, I had Cat on, and we were. Overdue with our baby, and our baby has well, been born. Ba- Christmas present. You've seen early her. Christmas. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen her. her. You've seen Sloane Chapman. So she is here, and she has arrived. So anybody She's who's gorgeous. listening, who's going, going with the baby? Yeah. I don't know about. Who cares about this guy? Yeah. Get the baby get, on. Get, get the, the baby get on the, the podcast. It's like, what do you got to say about Star Wars? Ah. Oh. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, the Last Jedi. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people said that. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Depending who you ask. Well, exactly. I've got uh, people who've been on before around, like Jess and Eli, who've been on the show were here before, and cousin Glenn was here before, ah. and he was. I wanted to get him back on again, but we see each other so infrequently. I reckon he would be pretty knowledgeable on the old Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, he is pretty knowledgeable on the old Star Wars. So let's just kick off. How you feeling about Star Wars at the moment, mate? I feel, to be completely honest, a little bit disconnected. Only because, only because I did think I loved The Last Jedi when I saw it the first time. Absolutely loved it, in fact. Thought it was one of the better Star Wars films. Mm -hmm. And then in subsequent viewings, I realized at the end of it, I wasn't sure what Nine had in... I didn't know if I was connected to Nine. Mm. So that's where it left me a little bit. It's weird because a lot of times the reaction seems to be the opposite. People have been really had a hard time accepting The Last Jedi on the first view ah. and they've gone I've gone back I've gone back because it's sort of a movie that you know challenges norms in Star Wars mm. and takes, takes risks and things and people are like oh I kind of like my Star Wars Star Warsy, and I don't need to you know and then ultimately they kind of grow into it grow well, sometimes into people it. just go like F that movie I don't want to know about no, it no totally not F that movie in fact I I really loved there was a hell of, I, I got a real uh, spring in my step watching it the first time I felt really energised where did you see it? I saw it actually in New Zealand I was in uh, Queenstown of all places oh, with, right. uh, now, is that do they get it earlier there like Australia because I think we get it a few days possibly it's so possibly weird because Australia was. was you know as a boy who grew up in the rural area yeah. we were the arse end of the you world for wa- getting stuff <laughs> we were way exactly. behind and then the internet came out and they're like oh yeah we better give these Australians and you know stuff on time or early and for mm. some reason now we just get everything a little bit earlier <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we're, we're current. We're, you know... We're, it's all we want. We it's just all want we to be just, current. current. We don't want to be ahead of the curve. We just want to be on the curve. Yeah, that's you know? right. I I have to confess as well, I haven't seen Solo, but I really, really want to because I've heard that it was actually a bit of a... a ki- like it was... Uh, it sort of was a bit back to form. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's... Uh, n- not to diminish it. Sure. It's a safe... Star Wars, film. right? So okay. it's very much you're getting what you, you you want your lasers firing, you want your spaceships roaring, mm-hmm. you want your quips, you want your you know. Mm. So it's very much it's not going to sort of challenge things you know thematically and stuff like that. There's some good little twists and turns and stuff. And you sure. walk out, you'll just go, "Yep, I had a great time with that." That hit, that scratched my Star Wars itch. Right. Well, I'm very yeah, very keen to see it. But I, it, I have in recent times had a bit of a uh, a reviewing of my. Girlfriend Anna had never seen Star Wars when we were traveling in New Zealand, and so we were in the back of a Scooby Doo mystery machine. <laughs> solving literally. mysteries, yeah, solving <laughs> mysteries. And Anna was like, "How has Anna not seen Star Wars?" Just like, as soon as we figure out the the, the, sto- the ghost of the the haunted railroad, yeah. we're going to go watch Star Wars. <laughs> it was a reward, and we turned out that it was the the creepy old guy who, who uh, yeah, it's always the creepy old guy, yeah. man, always. <laughs> but we watched. Uh, 
in the course, you know, in the back of a lap, in the back of the mystery machine on laptop, we got through the whole. Started with the prequels and got through. Oh, so you started with the prequels. Started with prequels. That's a that's a hang on. Potentially, an let me get this right. No, not true. We started with the ridge. Yeah. Started with the ridge and went back. Yep. And she was engaged the whole time. Engaged the whole time. Surprisingly, really, really enjoyed them. Uh, did agree that the original trilogy had the upper hand, mm-hmm. but yeah, we were primed for Last Jedi. Primed. So, so did she? Did you go through? To Jedi and then watch Force Awakens yes. right after? Yep. So no, we went to for, watch Force Awakens and then went and saw The Last Jedi. Right, yep. Yeah. So did you do, so when you watched them, did you go original three prequels, yep. then last, uh, Force uh, then, Awakens? Or yes. Did you, yep, okay. So you did that and then did Force Awakens. It's like release date, basically. Yes. Release, release order. Yeah, release order. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. all sorts of... There's all sorts of theories of which order to show them in. I always I think that was the release order. Yeah, I think the release people order. People kind of go, oh, you can do... Some people say you go... Four, five, one, two, three, six. Oh, there's there's all sorts of wacky. I just think the first one has so much heart. And watching it again, I was it's such an allegorical tale. Like it's so mythical. Mm. I think he what um, George Lucas was very influenced by Joseph Campbell, yep. the hero of a thousand faces. Yeah, and yeah. That yeah. Uh, I saw it on a whole new level, and I think I understand why people. It, it goes, yeah, it's got the you know all the the stuff of a great. Uh, adventure film but it, I think it was hitting people on a far more subconscious uh, deeper way as well yeah. and I, saw, I got that again well and, was yeah. there's a, a history about it it's a bit, you know where it came out in America in the 70s and it was sort of post Vietnam and Nixon and everybody was quite cynical you know the movies at the mm. time were quite cynical they're all like your dirty Harrys and they're all right. you know those those kind of fantastical you know journey movies didn't exist anymore they kind of been phased mm. out by the 40s and 50s and stuff you know and so I think the reason it struck a chord and resonated with people was just like, oh, it's this escapism. It's a classic tale. Cool. It's the hero, the hero's journey. You know, it's that. Hero's journey. Yeah. So, Force Awakens mirrors a lot of I Star agree. Wars. I agree. I agree. And I think on purpose because it's sort of a reboot and a relaunch and a sequel at the same time. It kind of mm. does the same, a lot of the same things. But um, yeah, Last Jedi certainly just flipped the. Flipped How did the, you feel? How do what was I? You? I enjoyed it, but I was it was weird because it was like. On the lead up, because you know we're like, sort of, I've got like, a crew of sort of Star Wars people, and you talk about what you want, and I said I want to be surprised and I want to be challenged, sure. and you say that until you until it actually you. happens, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then you're just like oh, you're like I want to be surprised, but not like that. Yeah, it was funny. I I enjoyed it, and I liked you know where it ended up and the risks it took, and mm. and I didn't have a problem with what they did with like Luke, how he sure. kind of gave up. A lot of people have that issue where he's like, oh, he gave up, he would never do that. And it's like, dude. He's got a long life. He's, had, he's got, probably got post-traumatic stress disorder that's just finally kicked in. Yeah, he's been through a lot. 30 years of adventures that he got to before he got to yeah. there too. So it's not the, like the same dude you left in the last one. Yeah. But I, um, yeah. Whoa. As a little bit of uh, context, we're on a, a table in front of a trampoline. And we've just got a trampolinist. Going to jump on. <laughs> and now she's looking at us. Go, Edith. Oh, there she goes. Oh, she's on. We won't cut this out. We don't cut anything out. We don't cut it. It's, it's live, um, baby. No, but I enjoyed it because I went to a screening with... Uh, through the Steel Wars podcast and they do it down at Knox ah. and they do like a live show afterwards like a live reaction pod with a bunch of comedians okay. and stuff and uh, yeah so it's like three in the morning Whoa. what have I just, what have I just yeah, watched, what, have I just watched? And, uh, what was the general feeling did you feel it was probably 50-50 50-50 there was a few there was a lot of people who were sort of a bit like wow that was yeah that was yeah. you know but it seems that most of the people I know now love the movie yeah but there are certainly camps who are just like uh, I mean there's there's bits of just like someone like Glenn who's like, oh, it just didn't jive with me and I've never gone back. Right. And then there's people, which is a little heartbreaking because Glenn, we've spoken, oh, he, was he was the guy. He was the guy. He was the all. chosen one of the family, you know. <laughs> he got us all into it. He did. So was that the same for you as well? Does yeah, I think so. Through? you got two older brothers. I got two older brothers, but I feel like it was probably the, His yeah, influence. That, that influence to really, you know, to elevate it to... What's the first one you saw in a cinema? I think it was special edition. Yep. You know? been... 10? Yeah. Roughly? What you, yeah. 87? Uh, 88. 88, yeah. So special editions would have been the thing. But i, I got to say also, uh, the cinematics of Knights of the Old Republic, I don't know if you've seen the cinematics. It's a video game. Mm-hmm. But those cinematics, particularly the second one, are a film all onto themselves. Did you play through those? Never played the game. You just watched like the YouTube. Just watched those cinematics, and was uh, if anyone hasn't seen them, those cinematics are a very 
uh, tasty slice of Star Wars. I have feel. you um, do you play? Have you played any like the Battlefront recent ones? No, like that? I haven't. Because like no. the last Battlefront has like a whole like first play, and they do have a whole story ah. and their cinematic stuff, and that's quite good too. Right, like, it's all like set just after the Return of the Jedi, and sort of like the Empire. That the rebels mopping up basically. I like that. I reckon I would really. Yeah, like that. it's quite like you just get on YouTube and just like watch it. Do you, know? mm-hmm. <laughs> you can just sit and watch mm-hmm. like an hour of cutscenes that feels like a little Star Wars movie. Just, it just gives you a little hit until certainly nine comes out. I remember loving. I don't know if you've played um, Jedi Outcast, mm-hmm. Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast. Yeah. I actually learned. I got that game at your house. Really? Yes. Uh, Cam gave it. Your brother Cam gave it to me. Wow. Uh, Facilitating pirate. Pirates, yeah. <laughs> maybe. I can't believe it <laughs> ran on my. Computer. Computer, buddy. It was a, <laughs> I was very happy day. That was a great game. Yeah, fantastic game. Dark Forces. I remember back in the day. Yeah, well, we had X Wing as well. Yeah, and Tie X-Wing. Fighter, and it was on like I remember Tie Fighter was on like fifteen floppy disks. That's how it had <laughs> like, to be. Day, you know, these days you complain. Like I can't even. Like I, I get annoyed enough to get up and like change the the DVD in my Xbox to change yep. games. Like I go, I like oh if they download on the hard drive, I can just switch it over. Imagine like sticking fifteen discs. It's, until, yeah. uh, you had to work for it. You had to earn your, earn your experience, <laughs> earn your game. So, you're uh, people who don't know, um, who are probably the regular listeners and people who are listening because specifically you're on will know that you're an actor. Mm. What, in your opinion, is the best single performance in Star Wars from an acting point of view? Is there one where you watched it recently where you jumped out and you're like, oh, man, because the, the prequels always get a little bit of crap about the acting being a bit wooden. You know what? I, I, I'm going to say a couple of things, and this is a really good question. I think in terms of an actor coming in and giving such a full-bodied performance in terms of having fun, being truthful, and setting such a tone, uh, Ian Mc, McDermott playing... Palpatine. Pal, yeah, like the yeah. Emperor. In, yeah. He just like... I don't know. Gets it. He gets it. Yeah. And he sort of, for me, I wouldn't say it's 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 a specific one. It's probably the one I enjoy watching the most in terms of the from an acting point of view because yeah. I'm just like that can come off so. Well, it's a weird cheesy, music because he know. played the emperor, you know, like in '82 or whatever. Yeah. And I think he was like 40 at the time or something yeah. like that, you know. And then he came back and played it as sort of age appropriate in his 60s in the prequels. And he kind of runs the journey where he's sort of like the. The aspiring politician who yeah. sort of got the hand on the shoulder, or, you know, totally. And you can kind of see he's moving the pieces, and then by the time you get to the third, he's just like, Bruh! he's going yeah. nuts, man. I mean, maybe yeah, I'm probably thinking more maybe Jedi, but into look, I'm gonna hand it to the original three of like Carrie Fisher, Luke, uh, Luke, Mark, Mark Hamill, <laughs> Luke, he's He'll just Luke, Luke to me. <laughs> and uh, Harrison Ford. You got it. Uh, I think there. They were just born to be in that position at that time. I mean, the stories of them getting cast. And mm. I, I, well, they're I, casting groups of three. Yeah. Now, have you ever done a casting where you've been cast as a group? Or yeah. Or they kind of go, oh, if we get this person, then you'll be in, but if the other person doesn't... Does that have uh, that They definitely do chemistry tests where they... I remember for a series uh, called Pact of the Rafters that I did, uh, they definitely did that for that. They got like, everyone in a room and were like, let's see how this... Works. They're going to look like you're related as yeah, well. Yeah, you're going to look at and just well. see if you've got a vibe together as well, you know. Yeah. I think... Uh, but though, I will say, I, last year, though, Mark Howell's performance from an acting point of view is mm. frigging awesome. Like, he's connected. You can see in his eyes. Like, oh, he might not have agreed necessarily. <laughs> I've watched some pretty funny interviews where he's given quite a bit of um It's like, well, I didn't shade. think that they do that. Yeah. I always thought Luke would be like this. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. You got it. That's my Mark Hamill. That's like really it. good. But, you know, that's what he wanted, so, so I, got, well, I just went along with it. You know? That's people, it. But then they do like, it's like, Mark Hamill hates the last See, Jedi. I, I so. might have... What I might have done is watch too many of the videos where people just shredded Last Jedi. For some reason, I found it quite addictive to watch those videos, and I'm not oh, sure look, why that is. You can write a thesis about... Well, look, it's obvious, at the end of the day, it's more entertaining to watch someone shit on something than to watch someone say that they like something. Yeah, I, I don't... Is, yeah, I know. It's a, a bit of a sad thing, fact, but, you know, but it's true. It's true. You know, um, and it, that's just a thing where it's... That became a, a, a... It became a... Not a metaphor, but it became almost like a symbol... For people, you know, who are anti a lot of things, mm. whether it be 
progressiveness or you know gender equality and stuff and they sure. saw that as basically like an example of something that was established that had been manipulated into something else that they didn't like for a different agenda a, yeah so they basically whether they even cared about star wars or not it was basically you could use that to rile people up to be like hey freaking now there's chicks with lightsabers yeah and, yeah yeah you know, um, and then you know clicks so if it gets the clicks whatever gets the clicks man you know if it had just been I don't know, it would have been Transformers that people hated and railed against. Mm. It would just be people would be talking about Transformers and how much they hated that. But it, that so just happened to be the thing, you know, because it's a cultural... Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. And it, it was a, you know, it was a divisive film for whatever reasons. But, uh, but people just put their... They projected their spin mm. on it or projected their... What, you know, what they wanted to get out of it, I suppose. But you fell down the rabbit hole, did you? <laughs> I did, man. And I don't know, maybe it was some YouTube. weird sadistic... Just like, uh, I don't know. But I... I, I I want to give. I think it will be a lot more will be made of it in context with episode nine. Yeah, well, actually, a little bit of episode nine news dropped today. We just got I've got someone here to talk to about it. Oh. Was that John Boyega? Uh, I did an interview with Total Film or somebody, and he'd said that episode nine takes place a year after. A year after. So we didn't really know. So what we've been talking a lot about was going oh, how is it, you know, because Love Is Your Last Jedi takes place pretty much immediately mm. after Force Awakens. You know, she's up the hill, and then the next yeah, she starts the, she, hand yeah. the lightsaber over. Yep. Uh, so it was a bit of speculation about like where the characters would be, depending on when the movie takes place. Yes. You know, if it happens the next day after that, well, you know exactly where they are. They're all on the Falcon, you know, flying away. But a year gives it, it's interesting because it gives it them is. a chance to breathe. But at the same time, it doesn't give them stacks of time to really do yeah. a lot. What would you like to see? What would what would be say you mentioned in your list before? What sort of things would you like to see in this? Um, I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see Ray, kind of, probably similar to Return of the Jedi, Luke, probably full of confidence, yep. really sort of more assured of herself, but probably not so much, because they kind of alluded at the start of Return of the Jedi that Luke was sort of dabbling in the dark side, you know, he kind of chokes yeah. a couple of people, he comes in all black and stuff like yeah. that as well. And it seems ridiculous now, but if you hadn't seen Return of the Jedi, and that's you, the first thing you'd You would have been Jesus, like, oh. has gone a bit off the... Yeah. So I'd like to see Ray established and confident, um, I don't need to see her training Jedis. I don't really need to see her have apprentices and stuff like that. But mm. I want to see her sort of, you know, more assured of herself that she, you know, she's kind of ready to take on the take on the Empire. Was it yeah. the First Order now? You yeah. know, you kind of got Kylo Ren. He's sort of running the show now. Yeah. So that was the beautiful thing about the Last Jedi, and the thing that I always say because people are like, oh, you know, they got rid of Luke and they killed off Snoke, and I'm like, yeah, but you pulled away all the safety nets. True. So then you basically made you, you you left your your two characters at the top of the pile. Mm. There was no Emperor. There was no Yoda. There was no Obi Wan. There was no. It's just like no. Nah, it's just about these two mm. sides of a coin. And yeah, I just want to see that kind of played out. It doesn't need to be the end. The end. Like I think it needs to wrap up. I don't even feel like it needs to because they're kind of going. Oh, it's going to wrap up the Skywalker saga. I don't even care if it just wraps up these three films. Sure. It doesn't no, have to it doesn't, end I don't know why everything. Say, yeah, I don't know. I agree. Because it's not going to end. No, no, it's not going to end. Disney bought that <laughs> for a lot of money. It's never going to end. Yeah. So I'd like to see that. I'd like to see them obviously do something great with Carrie Fisher. They seem to be confident sure. enough that they've got a way that they can do it. That's Hopefully it doesn't be... look too uncanny valley. Well, they said they're going to use old footage, so they're not oh, going really? to CG. I mean, they might CG like, you know, do like, the, or like a double like back of the head kind yep. of thing. But I don't think they're doing any CG as far as I know. The thing is, it's like... If you do it and it's not quite right, no, no, it's, it's just going to be a bit be, of a disservice. Bit it's going to be bad news. Do you think we'll see the Knights of Ren return? Would you like to see the Knights I'm of not, Ren return? I'm not indifferent to them. I think really? there was a good concept. No, that was great. But I don't know whether they're really necessary anymore. I know. That's why I feel... That's probably something I felt sad about. I thought they were the most uh, intriguing part. They were Luke's ex-students, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. Like, he's students that went off with uh, Well, that's ben. the implication. But, I mean, it could be that... Like, there was some people who are saying that maybe the because you know she has the sort of she touches the light and she has the vision and she sees Kylo Ren sort of stand there with his boys yeah you know, and they're going oh that we didn't see that it's like well maybe we just haven't seen that yet maybe yet. she's looking into the future interesting and that you know this is the, he's this gone is the to showdown some... yeah he's gone to get some muscle maybe she's she's brought in a few friends and so and he's, he's going to, to go and find some friends because yeah, he's ultimately a bit of an insecure bloke so sure he's got yeah <laughs> strength in numbers yeah so we'll see like I don't yeah, as long as it's kind of, as long as if it's going to have a conclusion, I just want to see it play out. I don't want to yeah. see that a movie and then all of a sudden the last ten minutes they're like, oh, we've got to wrap everything up. No. 
Oh, it's up. Uh, oh, we just got some shorts delivery here from, from my big brother, Aiden. Cousin Aiden. Yeah. Great. EV on the mic as well, but yeah. you know, he can wait his turn. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so. The Mandalorian, have you followed this? Yeah. Looks crazy cast. Crazy cast. The cast. Carl uh, Weathers. Really? Nick Nolte. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones. I like him a lot. Uh, the lady, not, I think the lady was a UFC fighter or something they said she was. I'm not right. She was one of the ladies, she was in Deadpool or something. It seems like a really interesting, and then the directors are really interesting as well. I think it's awesome. They've got like Taika Waititi and... Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, I think that's a great choice. And they've got um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, So yep. she did Jurassic World of, recently. Good old Ron. Or Rocket Ron. Yep. And, um, and then a couple of others. I think they've got a pretty... <laughs> Split, you know, they've been very conscious of like, hey, we acknowledge that Star Wars has been all directed by white dudes, ah. so here's a couple of you know different races, different sure. genders, and you know why not? And you know, absolutely, bring no, it on. And, yeah, it'll be interesting. And they're also doing the Cassian Andor. Have you seen that? The dude from Rogue One. I was surprised about that. I got to say, I really liked Rogue One. Not, I liked it more the second time, strangely enough, but. I thought that he, that was an interesting character to follow up on, you know. It's got a lot of potential. I mean, the only problem is when you do stuff like that, you know the character's dead. So you always well, take the dead, slight, yeah. the peril out. But, you know, spy, drama, you know, cloak and dagger, birth of the rebellion yep. kind of thing, getting your hands. It's kind of alluded in the film that he's got his hands dirty a few times to get stuff done. So He's a good actor as well. So I think yeah, you, know, you, Luna. you can build he, a series um, around his narcos. <laughs> my friend Catherine, who's been on a few times, she loves Diego Luna. Right. And she likes him in... Um, Dirty Dancing 2, Havana Nights. I didn't <laughs> even know that was a film. <laughs> He's like the hot, you know, Latin boy exactly. who dances. <laughs> Diago Luna. Diago Luna, yeah. So, no, it'd be good to see him and stuff. So, you're a, you're a man who's been in a few things. Mm. Have you ever tested the waters, put irons out for Star for Wars Star, stuff? Yes, I actually remember the very first, when they were making the prequels, I called my agent at the time, I was very young, and just said, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to be in this Star Wars film. Absolutely anything. Uh, and I never heard back. So <laughs> <laughs> so that was when they were filming in Australia? Yeah, they were filming in Sydney. I think they were filming in Fox Studios in Sydney. Yep. So I've seen, like, I've been in those studios and I've seen where it happened, but I just it's didn't... It's like a big uh, empty room. <laughs> like empty <laughs> room now. Wars. This is where we put a big blue screen up and a we lot did Star of blues, Wars yeah. in front of it. You're like, wow, it's there, like being in Tatooine. You know, <laughs> you know, people go out to Tunisia to go to the Tatooine <laughs> thing. Wow. Yeah, like, at least there's something there. You're like, this yeah. is where they shot uh, the um, Geonosian battle. There was a big green screen Two. here and a couple of uh, padded things that looked like creatures that people jumped on. Uh, so nothing for the new stuff? Uh, I mean, I know you probably there's things you can and probably can't talk about, but do you get feelers on that, or is it just really uh, a normal call and you're I, released somewhere? Not at this point in time. I think. Oh no, I'm lying. I auditioned for Han Solo. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd mention I mentioned. Sorry, I forgot about that. I did. I auditioned for Han wow. Solo, but it was it was under a code name. Was it um, Space? No, Red Cup. Yes. Red now, Cup. Now, a friend of mine, Jen, who's been on the show, she worked. Did I the, get the role? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> It's come out. Oh, no. Oh, sorry to be the one to bring it to you. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, sorry, I didn't do as well as the other nah. ones. You might have. Um, she works at the BFI, uh, the British Film Institute, and because they shoot all those in London, oh, okay. she um, works with a program that put in different diversity on film sets because oh. it's very sort of like someone you know to get jobs on there. So that's about uh, we'll bring in people from different backgrounds and different, uh, you know, you know, dis you know, people who've disadvantaged backgrounds and stuff. So she sure. put a lot of people on assistant roles on solo and stuff. And she right. was just like, oh, yeah, when we did it, they just said it was Red Cup. We didn't do Red it. Cup. So what can you say about the audition? Was it just like, here's some pieces of paper? Just no. Was it even Star wars at all? No. Or? It was very like a, um, like a high, like a frat house sort of, uh, party it was like a, a guy cracking on it's pretty age appropriate actually pretty age appropriate, pretty appropriate but i remember <laughs> i did one ver i did one audition and they were like okay that's okay that's okay and they said we're going to get you to we'd like to see another version of it can you can you please do it more uh can you be more like chris pratt <laughs> can you be chris pratt pretty much they can, said, you can you be fat be chris pratt from parks and rec that was what that <laughs> there you go. it said uh yeah they did that was the note you can, can you be you can come up. that's all right you can be more more Chris Pratt, please. And uh, I didn't know exactly how to... I mean, yeah, all I could do was just watch some... Oh, I'm just doing a podcast. 
Oh, we thought it was <laughs> my beautiful partner, <laughs> Anna. Anna, Anna, just come, Anna. Just come. come on, say hello. Say hi to say the... hi to all the friends out here. Hello, friends. <laughs> Angus is just telling us how he almost forgot to tell us he auditioned for Young Han Solo. Yes. Were you aware of this? Uh, yes, I was aware of this. Yeah. Now you. Oh, you read the audition with me. Yeah. Funny uh, package. It didn't look like um, it was the movie that it was. So after you, he said that you'd sort of like done the Star Wars marathon and stuff. We were on holiday. And yes. You watched a whole bunch of the Star Wars movies. Could you see Angus as a young Han Solo now that you're familiar with Han Solo, or? You don't have to. Um, I I could just see him doing his own version. <laughs> it's the most diplomatic answer yeah. I've. But you're just like there's only one there's only one Harrison I, Ford. I, I, and I. Uh, uh, version, but I can imagine him doing the Angus McLaren version for sure. Yeah, with a red beard. Well, you know, that's what hair and makeup... That's what movie magic is, isn't it? I think you know? so. So, more Chris Pratt. Was it yeah. just like a party scene, just like, hey, where's the beer? I'm a... It was a bit of like that. Do you remember the, the audition for Red Cup, a.k.a. Solo? It was... It was. He was coming to... That's, yeah, it was not a particularly memorable... So, how, what, what stage did you know it was Han Solo? Bye. Bye. Uh, it was... I knew from the outside. Uh, they still yes. had rumblings that they yes, were looking. I knew that that they was looked at like a thousand people, but yeah. they picked the first bloke they looked at. Which is amazing. And I already he did a really good yeah, job. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, great. Like, it's a similar thing. Like, he's not Harrison Ford, sure, but he but is Han Solo. Great. Well, and power know, to him. I'm, that's like, yeah. a really courageous thing It was really funny because on the lead-up, like, all the lead-up, everyone wanted to talk about was, was like, I don't think I can buy this Han Solo. I don't yeah. think, I, you know, this is going to kill it. And then after thing, for the most part, people were just like, yeah, he was great. You know, there wasn't, any issue anybody had with the film wasn't. I didn't think that that was Hans Solo. Well, that that is job well done. Yeah, because it's concerned. a bloody. It doesn't get much harder. Than no, that, as it doesn't as get as much harder. I mean, the thing with Harrison Ford, he is just. Uh, I don't know how to say it. He just oozes charisma. He makes he it look just effortless. effortless. It's effortless. Difficult, difficult, but just makes it look effortless. It's quite astonishing. He is definitely one of the most mag magnetic humans. On screen, like it's, I mean, he's proved it time again, you know, Blade Runner and Indiana Jones. He, that's not, that is a rare quality. So, this is the audition process. Is that just something your maiden says, just come in and read for this thing? Like, you didn't, they don't, you didn't go, hey, I hear there's a Han Solo movie, get me involved. Is it just really no, like, you, here's a list of stuff that you might be interested yeah. in, here's some stuff that's, you fall into that, you know, age gap and whatever they're looking for, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was just, I think they auditioned every male in our school. I was studying at WAPA, um, the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts over in Perth. And so they, I think they just auditioned every male that was within, you know. All right, so everyone was just range. like, you guys done Han Solo yet? Yeah, <laughs> so like, yeah, pretty much. Actually, one guy in the in WAPA near above, he actually got quite close, I think. Yeah, he, right. He's in Stranger Things. He came into the second, his name's Dacre. Montgomery. Oh, is he the dude who's like the bad Billy. boy yeah. in Stranger Things? Yeah, he's a very, yeah, right. very good actor. Yeah, he's got like the sweet sort of like 80s mullet, mullet going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, right. We, when Anna and I got to Whopper, he was in the year above and we remember seeing him in a, he did a Shakespeare measure for measure. Yep. Just blew it out of the water. Just, yeah, right. I remember seeing, so that guy can really do it. So he's going to have to get, you know, pushed off a cliff. You know, yeah, I think so. <laughs> kneecaps broken. <laughs> yeah, such a fascinating thing. Like, I, I honestly didn't know that that was even, like, I, I just was curious about, you know, the life of a working actor to how that works, how parts mm. sort of, you know, fall onto your thing. Because like you're saying, you know, you're going, when I was a kid, I was just like, get me Star Wars, get me Star totally. Wars. But it's like, Star Wars has got to come to you. It's, it's got to come to you. Well, but, but then again, I know that, um, I want to say Childish Gambino, but Donald Glover, I know that he just said, he said to his agent at the time, when he heard about Solo, he's like, I want to be Lando. Uh, yeah. And he, the agent laughed at him and just said, there's no way. There's no way. But there was a lot of fan There was a lot of fan casting on that too. There was, but at the time when he heard about it, he, his profile was, he was nowhere near as... He was from Community. Exactly. And they just were like, that's lovely, uh, Donald, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> and it's, you know, he built up his... He's trade, and before you know it, it yeah. like you said the fans sort of knocked the door down for him. Like I really hope that they. I mean, the movie didn't do as well as it probably should have, and it does. You know, a lot of theories as to why, and ultimately, it's because a bit of a boycott, wasn't it? Well, there's a little bit of that, but ultimately, the biggest reason it seems to be is that they just brought it out too soon. They brought it out five months after Last Jedi, right? And most people I've had on here, we've talked about it, just like. I need to charge my Star Wars G. I need, sure. to, I need to get my hype train back up. And like, Solo <laughs> would have been out this week. 
you know, we would have had a, a clear oh, year of yeah, runs yeah. this run, and you know, and it would have probably done it would have it would have done more bank. It's like what else is that at the moment? Like perhaps they felt like they had to try and recoup. Martin, well, they just wanted to do they wanted they wanted to try and do the Marvel thing and bring a few just out, every bang year. them out. But it's just different. It's too it is. precious to people. People want it, want to wait, and they want to build that that hype train. You know, mm. so you know, there's going to be Star Wars properties forever. So the dream may not be is it something that you still actively want to chase or you're just like ah oh, it's just another thing I'd love to no definitely in a, in a capacity I mean I'm, I'm really keen to do like I love obviously we'd love to be involved in any of the live action productions but also I'd love to do some voiceover work for the the games and, and also motion capture stuff because though yep. you know they like you're saying in the cutscenes of uh, Battlefront. That's their real actors doing that. Now. Oh yeah. So that's a whole new oh, well, frontier. Oh well, I just finished Red Dead Redemption too. Right. And that's got some of the best acting in it. Right. It's just crazy the crazy. how good the acting. Just it's just the voice acting. You just completely buy it, and it's just you know, and they get, you know, they they get names and stuff, but it always feels like the people they get for those those other ones mm. are um are just fantastic and stuff. So. You just don't know where you where you might mm. land, and like I said, Disney are going to be churning out stuff forever. Forever, so. man, and I, and I'm sure, regardless of how these films all pan out, one day, just like you know, Batman got the treatment with you know um, Christopher Nolan. I'm sure Star Wars will get at some point. It might be in 20 years, 50 years, whatever, but it will get a the most freshest update, and like a, an absolute banger will come out where it's yeah. you know. Well, they've just kind elevated. of reached a they kind of reached a level of quality now that they, yeah. they don't feel like they, they can slip under you know what I mean like yeah. I think they, there's like a code to what Star Wars is and you're kind of like well if you hit certain things you're going to get a pretty solid thing yeah. I guess the danger is complacency and all that kind of stuff sure. like that and Solo is very much a you hit the, you tick the Star Wars boxes and you get a good fun film you know Last Jedi is more like you F with the formula you're going to turn some people off but you ultimately make you're going to win a brand new you, but generation you, and you also extend the, the, you breathe life into something that wasn't there before you know do you think maybe we'll ever see a, a rendition similar to what Logan did for X-Men will we ever see an R-rated Star Wars do you think <sighs> It's hard to say, isn't it? Mm. It's Would you to like say. to see an R-rated Star Wars? I mean, I could, yes and no. I'm not sure what what it would what they'd want to put in it that I feel would make it better. Lightsaber through the yeah, like does it the need, head. do I need to see like gratuitous blood? Do I need to see boobs? Do I need to see f words? Like, is that really going to make Star I don't Wars know. better? Well, no. Probably when you say it like that, no. But for some reason, Logan really, I really loved that. Yeah, film. I suppose because Wolverine is a, ultimately a violent character as he well. Is. So maybe if it was through the eyes of the dark, some dark side users, yeah, you perhaps. could do that. Yeah, potentially. I mean, if they really want to mess with the license, they could do all sorts of mm. crazy things. It just depends. I mean, like the saga films, your eight, nine, ten. You know, they you sort of your steady story that runs through. If they want to do other stuff, if they yeah. feel that they want to hit and hit and miss and do and take some risks, but I don't think they really. They don't want to upset the cash cow too much. True. I think. What about a, what about a Palpatine origin? Him training in the dark side. Yeah, why not? You know, yep, you could do a young Palpatine. I'll do a young Palpatine. <laughs> you could do a young Ian McDermott. I could see that, but sure. I think you could bring that. Oh, oh. hello. Oh. Why are we just doing a little doing podcast? Doing a little podcast. Oh, bye. bye. You've just guessed it. My sister-in-law, uh, Christine, ladies and gentlemen. And she is good. And, and, and she's good. And she's good. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, so look, you know, as a man, as a as a professional, you, you just don't know what might come up. You don't know what they're looking for. Totally. You know, Star Wars has got more diverse, so, you know, the white boy quote has gone down a little <laughs> yeah, bit now. But this is a bad time to be an actor looking to try <laughs> and get you're like, well, Star Wars Well, I could do motion capture, I could wear a mask, or yeah. I could do, you know, all I could do is a bit more versatile and it doesn't really matter. But, um... The sun's in your eyes here. We'll wrap up. That's all right. But um, just going forward, what are you sort of, what are you hoping to see? Is, is nine all about nine? Uh, it's it's. I it's, mean, Mandalorian will probably come. Before I'm that. pretty excited about Mandalorian. That's kind of right up my alley. But I think I'm excited to see nine. I'm excited to. I'm excited to see. I feel like it could be a bit of a wild card and it could be the best out of the three I'm going to have to call it early right out of the new three yep out of in fact out of all of the remakes I reckon there's a there's an opportunity that it could just strike gold that's true if it lands it's if it's, it lands it's, it's, it's getting a, a, a getting a, a 
I would say perfect, but getting a, a solid trilogy is pretty rare. It's pretty there's rare. usually a pretty there's usually a stumbling block along yeah. the way, you know. You know, like your Toy Story's kind of done it and Lord of the Rings, that's kind of one story. You know, there's it, there's usually a stumbling block and mm. you know, people will half people will be like, Well, last year I was a bloody stumbling block, mate. But it's like, well no yeah. like you said, nine could make eight. It could better. make uh, it absolutely. In seen in the context, I feel like that would like Temple of Doom a little bit in the indie trilogy. Last Crusade was so awesome mm. that I think it even you know you're just like cool Temple of Doom. That's I think Temple of Doom. I have to look this up. Is actually a prequel. I think Temple of Doom is actually set no, before no, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, that's true. But that's true. But I just mean in terms of like the There's quality of that film. I think yeah, you see them sort of. The, the the high quality of the other ones uplift it, whereas if Nine tanks, it's taken Last Jedi right down with it, and probably <laughs> and probably the Force, Force Awakens. Awakens as well, and yeah. they'll just be like, oh man. Totally. I mean, it's gonna have to do some pretty. Well, that's the thing. It's like, do you do you take more risks or do you play it safe? This is the question that JJ Abrams has got now. He's like, well, uh, I've come off the back of something quite risky, but you know, Empire was a risky film. Absolutely. And I reckon they got nothing to lose. They just like push it out. I reckon they just go for gold. Just. Just give the people what they want and more. <laughs> what the, give them what they don't even know they want. Yeah, you know. I'm all for that. Uh, well, thanks for doing this, mate. Pleasure. Take your time of your Christmas. We're going to have some oh. some pavlova and oh. some stuff now. So, what's what's coming up? What's on the burner if people want to check out what's going on with you? Sure. Uh, yes. Let's do. Let's a do a little plug. You know. Now, we're, now he's like, now you're in my world. Um, well, it, actually, it's uh, exciting times. I have a film uh, released called Hotel Mumbai coming out in cinemas soon there's a trailer actually just dropped up i think last week but uh okay. it was a film shot over in in india in mumbai surprising hotel <laughs> mumbai uh they don't just do it you know they, they didn't make some they sydney studios and some green screens like no we <laughs> no we did it legit real legit and it's uh it's it premiered at uh toronto film festival and then they had it uh, at the adelaide film festival so it's had a good run like leading up yep uh, it's pretty hectic. It's about the 2008 terrorist attacks in the Mumbai hotel and mm-hmm. the surrounding areas. But quality Australian filmmaker, believe it or not, he's from Adelaide. But a, a pretty international cast. There's Dev Patel's in that. Army Hammer's in that. Nice. Um, a very famous Indian actor called Anil Palm, who is a, a god. Nothing like the short most famous, of a god. It's like the cricketers there, isn't it? They're just Abs- the biggest things you wouldn't, you've never heard of. Uh, people, women, women would literally come up and just hand them their baby to him, <laughs> and he would just be You're left like, hey, I'm standing like, right here, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like out of the way, non Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crushing industry. <laughs> it's a cr- uh, um, uh, any uh, your Instagram? I think that's a, you're in the social media stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I just got an Instagram handle. Um, I think it's Mr. Angus McLaren. All right, People pretty sure. Look for you. But also a film called um, Naked Wanderer, filmed in Perth, which is um, worked opposite John Cleese, the wonderful I love John Cleese icon, icon uh, which is a bit of a trip out. So I'm excited about that for, to release, and uh, uh, just did a guest in a series called Bloom, coming out on Stan. By Christmas, I think it might even be released By next Christmas. week. Could be so tomorrow. No, tomorrow. day after tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> so that's that's what's been going on. Well, I, uh, not as much as me. I've got no movies coming out, but <laughs> yes. uh, tune in. You never know what, what might happen. But thanks again, mate, and uh, we'll catch you later. My pleasure. Thanks, Josh. Bye.